How are we doing guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert earless vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 5 to non-earless to support cities. And we'll explain on how you can get them working at the end. So let's get straight into it. So first things you first, you're going to need is a Z modeler. Click the import button at the top left and import the vehicle you want. I'm going to be importing a M5 today for a police vehicle. It should be unlocked. If it's not, then um, you won't obviously be able to do it. However, obviously, if it is unlocked then uh, and you've got the permission to do so, then you will open it up. In here, you'll see on the top right, for anyone that doesn't know anything about Zedmonda, in here you've got your structures, your LOs, L1s, etc. This is exactly the distancing on what the car will look like, depending on the vehicle distance that is set in the settings. So... I'll go LO, which is the first standard what it will look like. You won't see that the, sometimes you'll see the livery. So in order to change that, what I'll do, I'll just back out. Start a new one, go to import. I will click that, come down to my uh, buttons down here. I will add a text and I'll import the actual file that it is meant and we'll import it. You should now see the car will have its textures. And that is really important just to double check if it does load without it. Um, just makes things a lot easier. Right, from here then, we want to find in the hierarchy exactly where the sirens or the extras are. So basically, an earless vehicle will have extras. And the earless software will uh, listen to the extras and turn the extras on and off depending on what the settings want. With non-earless, it's very much the opposite. You change them to sirens and the non earless software will just turn the sirens on and off and it's up to you as the developer to decide what pattern they do and stuff like that whereas obviously earless does that for you so you're not always using the extra resources so what you want to do is grab all of the extras drag them above which is what i normally do i then look elsewhere you'll see misc lights as well in here so i'll just move them up as well then you can get rid of the car for now. So you just uh, include the drop down, get rid of the car, and now you're dealing with just the lights itself. This one seems to be set up fairly simple because I've already done this one once before. So what you firstly want to do is get rid of everything that's in uh, bold. So by doing that, um, you want to dismiss them all. So click all four, dismiss, then use the little drop down, highlight using the uh, control key you can drag below so, uh, extra four and then just get rid of these top ones here oh uh, delete that cool so what that's doing is you're getting rid of the dummy and not the light itself the same thing with here this extra drag that down delete the top one same with this one Perfect. Cool. So now what you want to do is establish what each extra does. So let's have a look. The first extra does. So uh, what I normally do to set it up for myself and to keep it simple, you can go, you can put every light on its own siren, but you can only have a maximum of 20. What I tend to do is put the front on one and two, the back on three and four. And then if you've got red and blue uh, or red lights, then you put them on five and six. Uh, but you can go into completely different uh, ways about it. But essentially, that would just mean that uh, that side will flash, then that side just keep flashing like that. Uh, that, truthfully, is quite a lazy way of doing it. However, it just all depends on the, uh, the way that you set up your siren patterns. Um, but you can, like I say, go into having, for instance, this light on its own and this one, so they flash slightly differently in a different pattern, and this one and this one. It's entirely up to you, but this is the basics that I'm teaching you guys. Once you get the basics out of the way, then you can go into and explore anything else. So this one is the back. So you can see sometimes what they're set up with, these ones will be connected to some of the front. I would recommend not doing that. I would go into the uh, polygons at the top here, select the one that you want, and then you can see you can actually detach. So what you're going to select, put on, and then you can actually go down to detach and you'll detach it off of this so it'll be its own separate extra and it'll be down here and that's where you can put it into your sirens but for today that's set up okay so extra one we will change to siren three 
because I put three and four backwards, one and two frontwards, and so forth. You'll get the uh, hang of it as I go along. It does do auto saves down the bottom. It's very key very shortly on why. Um, and I'll explain very shortly. So we'll check the. Uh, so now you'll find that extra two here is actually at the front and it does some of the very front ones as well. So we'll make that siren one. Going down. Okay, so extra three is siren two because it's also at the front. So now we have the front two. So you can see the whole of the front. Um, of the car and I say the front because if I toggle on and off you can see that it's the front of the car so we've got our one and two and we've got a three now we're looking for our four which is there extra four these are not always this easy guys so uh, just obviously bear that in mind but this is quite a basic tutorial for you guys to understand extra three uh, extra six seems like it doesn't actually do anything it's potentially a dummy so we're going to get rid of that extra seven does the backlight here so we're gonna um we're gonna leave that for a second. Okay, this you can see this is a dummy. So that's the square here. That is a dummy. So ignore that, um, and you can delete that one as well. Right, this does the opposite of the back. So we're gonna hold that for two seconds, and then extra eleven does nothing, and extra twelve does nothing as well. So we're gonna get rid of eleven and twelve. Right, let's come back to these five and six here. Uh, this six, seven and nine here. So on the back, here, let me get rid of one and two for a second so you can't see the front. Right, so on the back here, at the moment, the way it's set up, so you've got three and four, and then these two here. These sometimes are changed into red lights, but depending on the type of the vehicle. On a later video, I will explain how you can do your UV mapping to make them red and stuff like that. But to keep it simple in this video, we're going to go for um, attaching them onto the other. So as I mentioned, I tend to keep it simple, three and four, one and two. Um, so what we're going to do, just to make it a little bit better, we're going to go click the attach button. This side, we're going to hook up with this side. This side, we're going to hook up with that side. Now what we have is four will do that, and three will do that. So it sort of alternates across the car. That is going to be as simple as that, guys. So what we'll now need to do, that's the first part. So we've identified and we've now got our sirens. Everything on the vehicle, likewise, is moved to sirens. You need to hold Alt and click one of the squares, and that will then highlight them all. If you don't have all of these highlighted like I have, then you'd have to do it individually. So individually, hold Alt and click them. Once you've got them all highlighted, then you click Reset Pivot Helper, which you can see it's gone back to the center. Reset to Parent, which might not actually do anything, so don't worry. And then you click this center local axis. So what that basically means is it's now going to give each siren its own axis. So you click it once and you can see it's given itself an axis. Because we've got the back of the car attached to the, the, uh, the top of the car as well, the axis is going to be in the center. What we now need to do while it's still highlighted is click the copy button under create and click once. Just be careful if you click multiple times, it will copy more and more. Or if you drag at the same time as holding it, it may slightly adjust where these positions are and that will not be good. So you need to make sure you go back to make sure they do not move. Once you're happy, unselect holding Alt, all of these. And then what you want to do is go and um, use your select button and highlight all of these. Right click, copy, convert to a dummy. And now these change to blue squares. This is really good. These are dummies now. So this is what the uh, non-ELS will talk to, these dummies. Now, we have four dummies. The problem is, these dummies are facing frontwards. We want to face them the opposite way. So, so it's the back of the car. In order to do that, we hold Alt on Siren 3 and Siren 4. So these are copied. Or you can always go into Select Quad R and then right-click, drag across. But that's the way I like to do it. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to go to modify, rotate. I always turn pivot off at this point. Make sure you turn pivot off down here on the bottom right. Just click anywhere on the top screen and type 18. So it's a 180 degree angle. And you can see that's changed around. Just make sure that the X and Y axis at the top are also selected. Otherwise, you may end up only having half, etc. Once you've done that, hold your shift 
and scroll wheel in so it's quicker. Click the move button and get rid of the X axis. And then drag ever so slightly down, not too far, just a little bit down. So that basically will sit the dummy behind the lights. So I'll explain further in a second why. And then we do the same with one and two, but we won't rotate because we're still on the right. Uh, that's facing the right way. Okay, so now that's done, we can unhighlight them all and you can see there's two lines now. What we want to do at this point is drag these lights into the dummies. So we go drag two with uh, four with four, two with two, one with one, three with three. This is the correct way of doing it. Don't do it up because you end up doing it wrong. Essentially, at this point, what I'll explain is the reason why we drag them behind is because we uh, these sirens that you see and the lights, they are permanently on the car. But what we'll do in a minute, we'll shrink them. So they'll always be on, but the, the non-earless sirens will illuminate them, so to speak. So we want to try and put them behind where they're meant to be to begin with. And then obviously when they flash into gear then obviously you will see them. Otherwise, if we don't do that, you may permanently see them even when they're off. So just bear that in mind. Once you've done that and you've dragged them all into here, you do the drop down so you see them all and you hold your alt again and click the sirens that are inside the drop down. Now you can see we've highlighted the lights again and not the dummies. From here, we want to reset to parent. So you can see these have a square at them or sorry, a cross. That is because the lights themselves are facing front, but the dummies are facing back. So we want to show to make sure the dummies face back. So we click the reset to parent and click anywhere once. And you can see they've now tallied up and reset to the parent, which is good. This is where I'm now talking about descaling them to make sure that they follow suit. So when we go scale, you type 0.01, 0.01. Naught point naught one. So what that is, you're hundred times making it smaller, and click apply. You've now seen that they've disappeared, completely disappeared, but they haven't disappeared. All that's happened is they've gone really, really minuscule behind the dummy, and this is that was the key part to making sure the dummies are in the right order, etc. Because if I now get rid of the dummies, you can see they are really, really small, and they probably look a little bit weird as well. So don't worry about that. Once you're happy and you've done that, click your structure at the top, click off anywhere and just unhighlight them all. And then you want to click the very top siren one. It's at this point crucial to make sure you save because this sometimes bugs. And if you drag wrong and it will bug and it will delete everything, you need to make sure you save at this point and save it somewhere that you know where. Just click the reset to power and off. And then you've got siren four on. Click the LO off now at this point and click convert to compound, lock it, hold the LO, and drag in. Then you do the same, take it off, take that off, convert, lock, LO, drag. What you may find with other people, and this is a very basic tutorial today, but you may find with other people actually copy this quite a few times, the Siren 1s and Siren 3s and all that lot, because what will happen is they'll put it into L L1, L2, L3 as well. So you may have like two, three or four um, different sirens because the further away it goes, the more you can see. And I'll explain when we get into the data side what I mean by that. So we've gone into, um, we'll delete this off. We're into siren one again. Lock, LO, drag in. And repeat the process until the end. Okay. Now we have got all of these in correctly. We now want to put them back into the correct location. So I highlight them again, just drag them above the chassis and we then put them back into our original folder. Now they are ready to go. In this point, in order to import, uh, sorry, to um, export the vehicle, you need to change whatever you want the spawn name of that vehicle to be. So I'll put it as pole M5 2022. Then you export it. You need to make sure here is, uh, let me go back to the correct folder, sorry. You need to make sure that this corresponds. So you need to type poll M5 2022. If you do not type that and it's something wrong, it will fail and you'll get zero, zero kilobytes. 
You also need to make sure it's saved as GTA range. And depending on what you want to do, you can lock it yourself or unlock it. But as soon as you lock it, that's it. It's locked. And if you don't know how to unlock it, then obviously you won't be able to edit it once you delete it out. Um, I normally put it as auto de uh, detect, skeleton, uh, skeletal, sorry, and save thumbnail. So once you're happy, you click export and that will then save it. And then you do the same again with uh, underscore high. And then you export it. But this time you put the poll M5 2022 underscore high. Okay, so that is what everything you need to do in Z Modeler. We're now going to go over to the data side. Okay, so now you come over to the uh, to the data side um, and the dot metas. So the first things first is the vehicles dot meta. You'll need to change that to the spawn name of your vehicle. Once you're happy with that, then you change game name. Depending on what the setup is, um, you can change it to whatever you need it to. That comes in a later video, depending on what you want to do with the vehicle. You'll then find the layouts. The layout is very uh, sort of standard dependent. If you've got a four door vehicle and it's four seats and it's a normal car, it's probably going to be layout underscore standard. If it is a two seated car, it probably be layout underscore low. If it is a uh, four by four type vehicle, it will be along the lines of layout underscore four by four something. It will say off, off the top of my head. You may then have for uh, the way it's set up with police cover offset you may also have the audio hash as uh, police depending on what type of vehicle you've got it doesn't always have to be like that in order for it to work but most cars um, can be set up like that this is the LOD distances that I'm talking about so when you've got LO1 LO2 LO3 etc and L0 L0 is your standard GTA um, setting so all GTA cars, the very first will just read off LO0. If you don't have L1, L2, L3, it will just read off L0. And these LO distances will correspond with them. It is important to make sure you do not find high numbers with these. If they're 500 to 1,000, 4,000, etc., that means that that vehicle will be displayed the other side of the map. You do not want that because that is trying to render in and you just want it to keep local. These distance here we've been working out. We reckon these are probably the alter, uh, the ideal LOD distances. A lot of vehicles actually have 15, 25, 30. And what essentially that will mean is if they are too low, when you start to drive a little bit farther away from the vehicle, it will disappear. You won't see it. You may just see people sitting in the driver's seat, but no car. That is very important to remember. Scrolling further down, uh, most of these things should probably be set up as normal. Okay, so this is the most important part for your non ELS. This is car calls. In order for you to set up your car to run properly, you'll need the car calls side of things. Anyone know decimal to binary? This is key to learn. So I have gone through loads of different uh, ways of doing it. You need 32 um, zeros and ones. And this is how you'd set it up. So for instance, I've worked out that the light will flash once and then it'll be off for three, flash once, off for two, flash, flash, off, flash, flash, etc. And you can make that up however you want to make it up. What you then need to do is convert this into binary in order to get that code there. That code corresponds to this value here. And you basically put them down as you go along. In car calls, a couple of things you need to worry about is the delta value on flashiness. And that determines whether you're front, left, right, etc. 0, 0.000 means it is front facing. If you scroll down to siren 3, 3.141 means it's rear facing. This is the um, setup I've got here. The 0xff them numbers, that corresponds to color, which is down here, color value. So uh, this means that this light here is blue. So when it flashes, the surrounding area will flash blue. If you want to have it red, for instance, like this siren 5, it's set to red and so forth what you also need to worry about on the sirens is your intensity value i normally have mine at 1.0 and my intensity value on the corona set to 0.5 if you set that too high that will mean the whole of the area will flash and it will be a huge flash so you want to try and keep it again local for the eyes purposes 
The rest of this is pretty much set up how you want it. The last thing is this scale factor. Remember when we did 0.01? That means it's to 100. So you need to make sure your scale factor value is set to 100. The best way of doing this is highlighting this, Control C, and then click Control F. That will bring up a finder. In here, you've got the uh, correct value here. Go to Replace. And then make sure uh, control V and then hit your 100. That will change all 20 of these without you doing anything. So you click enter and go down uh, all the way until the end. And it's changed every single one now to 100. And now you are set for that. There's uh, doo -doo -doo. as long as you copy these, it will work perfectly. Scrolling up to the headlights, so you can actually change the headlights to flash how you want to as well. I have them pretty much set to um, correspond with the sirens, so it doesn't look weird, but you can set them up however you want to. Again, you need to make sure you change the name at the top to correspond with the spawn name, so it works. And you need to set an ID value. This is now important because when you go to your car variations, you need to change your model name again. And scroll down to where it says siren settings. You need to make sure that number is exactly the same. Apologies. You need to make sure your car calls number is exactly the same. So you copy that and you put it into there. If it's not the same, it will read differently. What that could mean is if you have one standard car calls for loads of cars, you just put that as that standard number and they all read off that one car calls. With, with the rest of your car calls, these numbers here correspond what the color of the car will come out. They're pretty much set to white, I think it is, uh, for the police cars because they're all white. Handling is a whole different ball game. You worry about that in a different video. So you've got four standard datas that you need to worry about within your folder. And that is purely there. Once you've done that, you will then be able to import your data and your stream into your uh, server and it should look something like this okay now you are in the game and you've put all the resources in the relevant folders you can now attempt to spawn it in there we go the car is now in the last thing you need to do in order for the sirens to talk to the car is download something called luxar that can also come in a later video on how to uh, install Luxart and get it set up with the different siren codes, etc. However, once it is in and it is talking, what you can now do is flex your Q muscle. And this is our light set up exactly how we are going to set them up. Looking around the car, this is the pattern that I tend to go for, which looks pretty cool. And that is the basics on how to convert earless to non earless we will also go into the video for instance i wanted to um only have the fronts working and not the backs scroll down to the lights themselves and you can put them into extra dummies so you'd create another dummy the dummy would be down the bottom here drag it up to the correct section you want it Shove it in there. Change this to extra underscore one. And then you'd put three and four into extra one. And then that would run it like that. So you would then go into the car. And I can show you uh, what I mean by bringing out the pole 33D. On the reverse, you can see just the red lights are currently operating. In the vehicle extras, you can see there are one and two and that is exactly what i mean by uh, you can change or you can have them both on at the same time but obviously as we know from real life you wouldn't have the reds running while the blues are running you'd have it vice versa and that is literally the basics on how to convert earless to non earless hope you enjoyed the video guys thank you and feel free to drop a subscribe and check out the socials maybe check me live at twitch.tv slash deggy uk till next time guys have a good one